David Harlela gets words to an ah. Nelson to Chison, Hong Kong Turchin, Ekbritan Irgin, Ekner Avishavan, Gorong of Nihant Amdrid. Only California, Exergo League, Business in Utterly and Baclaur Jerkta Toxin, Dodo, Hado, which is Sulikh, Saxon Book Toxic Tortan, Dutch Bottle, Old Woodley Hurung, Hurungar Old Tinchigler Agile. Мянгасан зүйрий сонд Хонконгдэг Ротари клубын Коблун салбарт элсэн. Good evening, David. Good evening, Jigal. How are you? Welcome to the program. Thank you. It's so good to be here. You, you came with a big delegation from Hong Kong. Tell us about the delegation and what are you doing here? Well, you know, I'm very lucky. I'm, I'm governor and I've got fantastic support from my district. So I've got about 52 Rotarians coming from Hong Kong to join me on my first district governor visit to Mongolia. 52 delegation from Hong Kong. It's the record for right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, why and when you became a Rot- Rotarian? I came, became a Rotarian in 2000, sorry, 1999, if I remember correctly, uh-huh. about uh, 12 years ago. Okay, 99. And why you have joined Rotary? You know, my whole family is Rotarians. My, my, my father, my uncles, it's been like I'm born into a Rotary family. Wow. My, my uncle is, is one of the first DG's district governors of our district. Wow. And every one of my uncles and my father have been past presidents. Please tell our audience about the Rotary Club. What <laughs> is this about? You know, I, I, I like to think of ourselves as an international organization of volunteers who have the heart, who care about people enough to go out and use our hands and our souls, and not only our money, to make it a better world for everybody. That's my definition. That of sounds career. good. And uh, the same are the Rotarians in Mongolia, which is already a quite large family. How do you think? What they, what are they doing? How is the, how, how is uh, Mongolian Rotary movement? Well, I on? think the Mongolian Rotary movement is going very well. You have you have eight clubs here, and they are really working very hard and they appeal to the young of the nation as well as capturing the elite of the nation, which I think is the best combination we can hope for, the leaders of the past and the leaders of the future. What you said, the heart, what makes the people of Rotarian special? <laughs> you know, I, I do so much charity. I can only speak for myself. Okay. Because to explain, anybody, everybody has their own reason for joining. To me, when I was young, I, I'm, I'm very religious. My family is very religious. I've been raised very religiously. So Which I've religion? Hindu. I'm Hindu. Hindu. Uh-huh. And I like Hindu because we accept every religion. God is yes. infinite and universal. Yes. And when I was young, I went to the temple to pray, and I got my peace, and uh-huh. I found the glow. As I get older, and I learn, and I live life, and I'm so disillusioned by people, by children dying, I can't explain God anymore. Because why would a good God want to destroy something that's beautiful? And for instance, a child who never had a chance to do anything wrong. Then I sort of lose my faith in God. I still practice being good as I can, but I've lost my way, so as to say. Then when I joined Rotary, I found that the people were very nice, and we all do charity. And simply we do it by writing checks. is the simplest and easiest way and the cleanest way. But you know, that doesn't appeal to me. So when I joined my friends in Rotary, they took me projects that they did and you know when I do things with my own hands and my own spending my time which is not precious but when we can share with people and see the pain and agony that others have we take so much for granted then I feel we can do something the first time I saw a hospital in China for a gift of life operation which is to give operations to kids with holes in the heart we went and visited them because we wanted to donate. And this is what Rotary does. We spend our own money to go and investigate. And we went to the hospital. We saw these children. And, you know, my heart died, really. For 3000 U.S., I got to play God for one minute. $3,000, an operation, and I saved a child's life. And I saw it, and I, and, I, and I felt it, and I saw the emotion of the child and the parent, and I was hooked. That's a wonderful thing about Rotary. Yes. You have uh, initiated an interesting project, Rotary the One. Tell us about that project. You know, it's, it's always, you know, I never knew what I wanted to do. Uh, it's, you know, I, sometimes I think life, life leads me not to where I want to go. It's, I believe where God sends me sometimes, this invisible God who moves us all in different mysterious directions. I'm a very, 
I'm a very zealous business person. But what happened to me was about last year sometime, I, I heard a story about Dr. Hendrik Wubin. I've never met the man. I'd love to meet this man. But this mm -hmm. man so inspired me, and he's in that catalog. He so inspired me. He's, he's, he just left the comforts of Germany to go to Africa. He wanted to help people in need. And everybody knows Africa is like got to be the worst place in the world for having problems. So he went there. He joined the hospital. And it was a private hospital. And after a few days, after a while, somebody came to see him. Two, two patients, local blacks, came to see him and asked him for help. And they had no insurance. But this was a private hospital. And as you know, the world works in str very crazy ways. No insurance, no cure, no, no attention. Uh -huh. So he had to turn him down and send him away. A few days later, he heard that these two patients had died. Dr. Hendrik was totally depressed. He said, you know, what did I come here for? I came here to save lives. You know, I came here to save lives, not to watch people die. So he left the hospital because he could never work in that environment. And he joined the United Nations, which offered him 8,000 US dollars, a house and a car. It's a lot of money in a country. He, he went to Nambia, which is a, a very poor country where people live on one to two dollars a day. Uh -huh. And he started his own little clinic in the city to help the, the, the old, the young, the poor, the needy, the drug uh -huh. addicts, uh -huh. the prostitutes to the state that the drug, the drug people wanted to shoot him and the, and the pimps wanted to kill him because he was trying to convert them. And sometimes when he went home at night, he would be mugged by the very people he cured in the afternoon. Oh this is, you know, it's, it's, it sounds very amazing, but if you live in countries where people, one dollar is a matter of life and death, you begin to wonder what happens. Well, Dr. Wubin didn't leave. The next morning, he went right back to work. So to me, this is a very special person. The one is looking for this kind of special person, the hero of all heroes. Like Mother Teresa. Absolutely. The Mother Teresa of tomorrow. We need to find that person and wow. honor her. If the world finds another Mother Teresa, that would be <laughs> much better, no? Do you know my dream? I think <laughs> there are a lot of Mother Teresas out there, and we need to find them. Great. That's very interesting, very noble purpose. Thank you. Uh, what national you are? Nationality? I'm Indian. I'm Hindu. And you're called also? Uh, I call myself a Chindian. I'm proud to say that. Chindian. Why? I, I'm an Indian, born in China, so I, I, I like to call myself a Chindian. My wife says, you know, maybe you were born Chinese in your last life. Uh -huh. But I, I think the people... How many generations you have lived in China? Actually, uh, this would be the third generation. In My Hong grandfather Kong. came to All Hong Kong. And you were a trader's family, obviously, or what kind of businesses you have been doing? Your Actually, family? my grandfather was very successful, and he went to, uh, to Shanghai in the 1930s, uh -huh. established business, and he gave credit to, to the Spanish traders. What business? Uh, I, I'm really, I think it was fabrics or tea uh -huh. or silk. I think it was mm -hmm. silk, if I remember uh -huh. correctly. I wasn't even born at that time. Mm -hmm. I'm a young man, you know. <laughs> anyway, he did it, and he actually, when there was war broke out, he, he lost everything because nobody paid him. Uh -huh. So actually, we ended up restarting again, and we moved from Shanghai to Canton. Uh -huh. And my uncles and my father had to start life all over again. Uh -huh. And they were, they had schools. I mean, they were young when they were early primary school. They had drivers and chauffeurs. Uh -huh. But when they came to Hong Kong, they were penniless. They had to start life all over again. Again, and what they have done? They, they are. You know, my, I, I'm very proud. I come from a family of people who started from zero. And I like to try to follow that philosophy. Because if you make money with your own hands, then you, then you have respect and you fear going back to, which is very exactly. important. They started from zero and they've been very successful business In people. which business? Our family started with actually tailoring. We were uh -huh. the largest tailors at one time. Mm. We also broke, we broke it into, uh, f first we were hawkers actually, and mm -hmm. then we sold fabric and textiles to the British Army because mm -hmm. we were honest traders and we wouldn't make huge margins. Mm -hmm. We made a decent profit and we were very respected by the British Army, the American mm -hmm. Army, mm -hmm. and it just grew and grew and grew. Mm -hmm. And we, we became the biggest tailors in Hong Kong, sometimes making at one time a thousand tailor-made suits a week. Wow. In those days, this is mm -hmm. going back to 1960s, you know. And what other business do you run now? Our family has evolved. We have, we have switched from tailoring, which is a service business, into another service business, which is hotels. Our group, everything we own is family owned, we're private. Uh -huh. We refuse to be uh, anything else. Uh -huh. So there are six brothers. Uh -huh. 
and there will be six directors always in the family. Mm -hmm. Each family can appoint one director. My father unfortunately died. I love him very much and I represent him on the board. Mm -hmm. That's the group. You are the older son? I'm the eldest son of the eldest son. Okay, you have five brothers. I have uh, two brothers and I have five uncles. Oh, I see. They're, they're children as well. Yes. So we have six on the board always. And uh, which hotel now? We actually have uh, almost seven hotels right now. Uh -huh. The more famous would be the Holiday Inns in Hong Kong, Singapore, Penang, Bangkok. Uh -huh. We have shareholding in the, in, in the Stanford Intercon in, in Hong Kong. Uh -huh. And, and also in the Western in Macau, that's mm -hmm. partnerships. But the Holiday Inns are fully owned by us, the mm -hmm. four. And we also have another boutique hotel called Thompson, mm -hmm. which we're just renovating in London. Mm -hmm. And we have two other hotels in Canada, which are small, mm -hmm. Hilton and Ramada. Well, <laughs> Hilton and Ramada, okay, it's very small. <laughs> so is it uh, hard to be at that standard of these brand names in business chain? I think every business today is competitive. Money, mm -hmm. money has no value, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Inflation, if you go to Hong Kong, what cost you, a, what, what was a million 15 years ago could be 25 to $50 million for the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's basically inflation, and that's why the world's a mess. Mm -hmm. People have gone back to gold and, and jewelry and diamonds. Basic, we don't trust the money system anymore. Why is that, to your opinion? To me, it's something that I think that Rotary has to bring back. It's bringing back core values and morality. In everything? I think so. I think integrity is missing. Uh, we live by the four-way test, as you know. I think yes. you, you're returning to my friend. Yes. <laughs> and uh, basically, is it fair to all concerned? Are we doing the right thing? These are basic human necessity and rules of being good. And but these four yet principles, simple principles, have been forgotten by many people in the world. They have not, never been using it. That's why we have a crisis, subprime. Et cetera. We, yeah, we need to educate our children. The problem with our generation is I, I love kids and I mix with them, but you know, people tend to spoil their children. And you know, love is sometimes saying no. And we have to learn that message because you can love the child to death and you can provide them shelter and love and protection till you die. But the minute you're gone and if you haven't made them strong enough, then you've created a problem for the world. Exactly. Uh, that's why I think the Rotary is the largest in the world NGO, which uh, creates the large amount of fund that goes back to the people, but uh, living for even poorer people. Absolutely. We're, wherever there's a need, we're there. We've actually wiped out, we're trying to wipe out the last major viral disease in the world, which is smallpox. I'm sorry, yeah. polio. Polio. Is it polio done now? You know, it's, it's difficult because the world's a mess. There's, there's polio. We've spent almost over a billion dollars. We've had $255 million donated by Bill Gates, who is no fool, who believes in Rotary. But, you know, polio is hard to control in countries like India. It's actually almost, we've had no cases reported this year. This is one of the last, there are four countries considered endemic today. Wow. India's one of them. But this year, no cases reported in India so far. The other problem is Pakistan, Afghanistan. They're in a war state we can't even go in. We can't send people in, it's unsafe. And then Nigeria is another area we worry about. But basically, we've taken millions of deaths down to v less than a few hundred. But we have to kill this disease for once and for all. It's a challenge that Rotary has taken upon on its shoulders, and we're going to do it. It's uh, basically an uh, illness of uh, poverty, in a way. In a, in, in a way, it is. And more, it's, it's, it's if you drink the wrong water, you, you can end up with polio. It's, it's, it does, and it's such a simple cure. It's two drops in a child's mouth, child below five years, and he's safe forever. Uh, what was the latest, if you know, the case registered in Mongolia? Zero. M Mongolia, Zero. as far as For many nothing. years. But you know what's happened all of a sudden, which has surprised the whole world, mm. was reported just recently, and by recently I mean uh, probably in the last two weeks, mm. China has had an outbreak of virus, of, of the polio virus, mm. uh, in, in one remote part. I can't remember the part. But this is like out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And China has been polio free for many years. Mm -hmm. But this disease, don't forget, is viral. It can spread like water. That's why Rotary is working hard. See, uh, Rotary is a wonderful movement where people come by their heart, as you said, and do the cause that makes life different. Being a district governor, having a 2,000, I don't know, many Rotary members, how you keep them 
keep motivating, though they are already motivated. But <laughs> what is the way you think uh, new and uh, interesting you do? I, I just try to make it fun. I think the key is if you make people happy, and happy people means they're happy, they emanate that, and everything spreads. That's true. Membership spreads. Uh -huh. uh, people will talk about Rotary uh -huh. if they're happy. I started to change everything from day one. Uh -huh. I started the project, the one, and I've arranged the money for three years for this project, not because I'm not going to be governor next year, but I want to show that we have to think three years. Uh -huh. So you're Monaco. working with the pre uh, next governor? No, I've arranged the funds for this project for three uh -huh. years. No uh -huh. governor has ever done that before. Uh -huh. They, every governor starts a project and finishes in this year uh -huh. or leaves or, or suggests they continue the project and do mm -hmm. their own fundraising in their year. Mm -hmm. I don't want my other governors who are following, following me to be stuck with something. Okay. I want to create projects and I want to create fundraising uh -huh. with major corporations backing us uh -huh. and so we can have a continuous project. Uh -huh. Because if I can do a good job, the next governor will do better. So you are looking for uh, the hero of modern world who is devoting himself or herself to the causes of other people's living, making it better. Very simple. So service above self. Service above yourself. This what is the Rotary? principles of uh, Rotary. So, how successful you are in this mission? We, we've just launched the website mm. and we have actually, I've talked to, you know, there are 530 governors in the world. I want to use the power of Rotary. We're 1.3 million people in the world. I don't want to spend money mm -hmm. to save lives. I want to spend money, I mean, not on the one, what I mean to, to promote the one, I want to spend money on saving lives. So I've got my own budget. I've got donations from my friends. Our family will sustain a ball every year on, on the money raised that night, which I reckon would be at least 100,000 US or above, mm -hmm. will be used to sustain the project every year, the cost of promotion. The prize money is 50,000 US. Mm -hmm. I've, I've convinced a very good friend of mine called Richard Elman. He is the CEO of a group called Noble Group, which is the largest commodity company in Asia, 19% mm -hmm. owned by Chinese government. Mm -hmm. He's a very good man, and he heard the story, and I said, let's do it. He said, David, it's done. I'll give you 50,000. I said, nope, I want 150. He said, why? I said, because if I do something, it must be continuous and sustainable. So you got it for three years, they're fun. I got Every it for year. Life, trust me, I got <laughs> it for <laughs> Well, uh, so uh, have you been funding these people? The we've started and we've actually started to get nominations mm -hmm. coming in. And I can tell you in the Philippines, they're so excited. I've got seven governors in seven districts. The whole country wants to start their own, the one campaign for the hero in the Philippines. I said, wait a minute, it's my idea. Help me, don't compete with me. <laughs> so we're going to help them. Look for the one. We'll look for the one for the world, but we will also honor the one in India. See, my dream is to think international. This is an international project. I represent Hong Kong, Macau, Mongolia, but I like to think with the world. I think the Rotary has to start thinking differently. What is the thing that in Mongolia we can do better as a Rotarians? You have the heart. I, I, when I see this country, I'm so depressed because I know as a businessman, I've invested in some companies, I know that you have most of the, what can I say, every natural resource you can think of. Today, commodities is so valued that you probably got bankers lining up and investors yes, lining up to come do, at your door. But what really hurts my heart is when I see the roads are not done. I see people suffering. I see people having fires that are cold. I believe they're cold, or cold stoves. Or yes. whatever. So what are you doing? You're polluting the world. Yes. You have a country that has the potential for all the wealth but the people are not improving, and that worries me. That worries me, and that's why we're here. So what can we do? Well, the Mongolians are doing it. Every day they're finding projects, they're finding projects, and even though they don't have the money, they're finding partners all over the world. Rotary is finding partners from them, from clubs in all over Asia, all over the world. People are sending money in so we can change, change the game, make Mongolia cleaner, better, and brighter. It's our duty to provide a better future for every child. There's a project called Test for Life. I am so proud of it. You know, this is, uh, I actually, as a governor, I, I've, I've started very a lot of different things. Mm. Uh, one of the things I've done is I give report cards on what I do, and I, up, I talk to every single club. I visited 35 clubs before I gave, became governor. That's unheard of. And I don't visit them, I talk to them. I believe a governor needs to talk to his people. Yes. 
He needs to do what they want him to do, not to force things on them. We are all equals. So I talk to the clubs and they give me ideas and that's when I also give them my ideas. I test new ideas with them. You can't force adults to do something they're not ready to do, but you can inspire them. Because for my audience, please describe the project. Test for Life? Yes. Test for Life is a project started by Dr. Bayer. Bayer Sehan. I can't Mongolian pronounce doctor. it right. Yes. Uh -huh. his, his grandmother died at an early age out of cervical cancer. And he was so affected. Dr. Bai, I think, is a household name in Mongolia, as far as I know. He's dedicated his life. He's a very serious man. He's a very funny man. I find him, oh, he loves Mongolia with a passion. Yes. If everyone loved Mongolia with the passion that he has, <laughs> your country would be turning. Yeah, we do. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. <laughs> so he's decided to take upon himself and ask Rotary to help to identify and go and visit nomadic women all over Mongolia. He takes a troop of SUVs and drives them all over the world with his volunteers and gives them free checkups to see if they're in the early stages of cervical cancer so that they can be identified and taken care of. And he's almost covered the uh, whole country. He's covered the whole country. I'm, sh I'm not sh quite sure up to where he has, but I do know from the last report we got, he, he, he actually checked up 16,000 nomadic women. You know, the man is, it's not easy to go across Mongolia. It takes days to reach some cities. Yes, and, and he spent his whole holiday for that, taking other doctors, he's attracting a, other people. He's a very special person. He's, like I said, he's a tough person, but the most important thing is the person with the heart. And being a Rotarian, when you show us your heart, he can inspire all the Rotarians in Mongolia and the Rotarians all over the world. Actually, I can tell you that I have nominated him for the, Rotary, for the highest Rotarian award, which is service above self. I can't guarantee he wins it because this is chosen by Rotary International. But we in Hong Kong, we in Macau, we in Mongolia are proud of it. I think Mongolian Rotarians are very proud of him uh, and very happy for what he's doing. He's very famous. <laughs> and I think uh, really he is saving many lives, many mothers. Uh, back to... Um, uh, Hong Kong and your uh, district. And how many altogether clubs are there? We have 64 clubs, 50 uh -huh. in Hong Kong, uh -huh. 6 in Macau, 8 in Mongolia at present. Mm -hmm. We'll be opening one more in Hong Kong. I've got fantastic presidents. I'm only two months into my, uh, into my governorship and mm -hmm. every target that I've set has been achieved. Every target. The increase in membership, new clubs, new Rotary clubs, Interact clubs, our targets for Rotary Foundation, but I believe in raising the bar. You obviously have been, uh, you said, generations of uh, uh, Rotarians, and now you are doing such an interesting work. Most importantly, you are inspiring so many Rotarians. What do you think is, what does it take to get people inspired, charged, moved? <laughs> what do you think? What is your take? Talking, words are simple. Words is one way to inspire them. I talk to everybody one on one. I will talk. I talk to Japanese businessmen in Hong Kong. I talk to the YMCA. I talk to the Junior Chamber of Commerce. I just go out and sell. That's one way of doing it. But show them what you do, and the world crumbles because I believe everybody has a good heart. If you show them the good work that Rotary does, and that's what I do. To, I talk to every club. I've talked to over forty clubs since I've been governor, and I tell them we have to do the PR. People think that we are a bunch of guys wearing a tie, standing in front of a banner, or having big fat lunches. No, my friends. We are unbelievable people. We spend our Saturdays and Sundays, and we visit everybody, and we save lives. Uh, how many people all around the world, your company, employ? My company? Yes. I have no idea. In Hong Kong alone, in, in the one hotel, we have over 600 employees. 600. <laughs> in our house, we have over 80 employees in our personal house. Uh -huh. Our whole family lives together. We are a really funny family. We live together in a 72 bedroom compound. Wow. <laughs> all family mean all the six board members too? All the six board members and all the children, all the Haralilas live together in one house. This is the way our family lives. In which part of Hong Kong? Interesting. Kowloon <laughs> <laughs> Tong. Oh, this should be a quite big space. Yes, we have almost a city block. It's a, it's a beautiful Indian house. We retain our culture. Mm -hmm. We have a whole the whole ground floor is dedicated to parties because I told you my family is great. Huh. My grandmother always says, no matter what, even if your enemy comes in, you give him a glass of water, offer him something, and you talk to him. I have visited uh, India. 
some years ago, and I had a great uh, opportunity to travel around India, and as I found out, the Indian people are very hospitable. We happen to be in Trivandrum and down the, in the south end tip of India. Uh, we went to the city, Trivandrum, and we went to a wedding ceremony. <laughs> Fantastic, great, great hospitable people. We need to learn how to make more love and less war. <laughs> uh, and uh, one of my heroes is uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Absolutely. What is your take on this man, great man? Great men suffer. Great men suffer to achieve what they, wa what they want to achieve, and they see things before others do. He, His, he died for all of us. And he's, and he's a man that's, that cannot be imitated. His, his, his children tried, but not the same. But great men are a special mold. It's like Mother Teresa. I've, I've always wanted to meet her. I've never met her. But she is my idol. Mahatma Gandhi is definitely my idol. I've met, I've met, I've met Indra Gandhi, who is the, his prime minister, his granddaughter. She was a great woman. But great men and great women don't last long. Somebody <laughs> removes them from the face of the earth. Uh, Indira Gandhi was a great uh, friend of Mongolia. She visited us in the 60s. And later on, he's a... So we recently hosted an Indian president in Mongolia. Oh, very good. It's a second president visit to Mongolia. And uh, his sons also loved Mongolian uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Um, <coughs> uh, Jawaharlal Nehru was writing about uh, Mongolia, uh, the history of Mongols, etc. So I think these two nations are very close and somehow. And you know, the Taj Mahal, the relations, you know, the king. So uh, I think a lot to explore to understand each other for Mongolian and Indian nationals. And Definitely. I think that's the next in the future story. And what you do in very symbolic, being an Indian and being a Rotarian coming here and then disseminating this energy, you know, love, enthusiasm to make our world better. <laughs> Thank you very much for what you are doing. Oh, it's a pleasure. And I wish you and your district and all our uh, Rotary members in the country under your uh, leadership uh, have a great success in what they do, and they are already doing. Thank you very much, David. Thank you so much.